In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of how you can create these dependent drop down lists and this flash looking dashboard here. Pick different things and your chart automatically changes and all your data. Now, obviously, you can link this to anything you like once you've got the spreadsheet in your hands and you know the method. Hi, I'm John. This is Up for Excel. Now, before you do anything else, download this spreadsheet because it's going to help you massively when you can work along with what I'm doing. It's completely free, no registration, nothing like that. Click on the link, straight to the computer, off we go. Now, it might already be out, but I'm also going to make a video where I'm going to go through this in a lot of detail. So if some of the stuff you feel is rushing over that, you know, click on the link in the description and get that detailed video. If it's not out yet, subscribe, hit the bell icon, and you'll be reminded when it does. Just gonna give you a quick demonstration of what I've done here. So on this particular one, I've got three different items in the primary drop-down list with this category of product. Click on say furniture. You then have a list of furniture types. So let's pick tables. Now, if I pick office supplies for example tables is no longer on the list it's defaulted to the number one item i've got now a different list completely that i can pick the sales and profit numbers are driving out the charts driving out so how have i done this okay firstly i'm going to unhide some of the original the workings behind this okay and now there's also a few hidden rows so we'll just unhide those with Control shift 9 this is my primary list here, product category. Now to add that to a drop down box, it's fairly simple. What we're gonna do is you go to the developer tab. Now, hopefully you all know this already, but if you haven't got the developer tab, you can click up here, um, go to more commands, and then you can actually just go to customize ribbon, for example, tick developer, hit okay, right. On the developer tab, insert form control combo box click on a combo box right click on it format the control and your input range then is that list and your link cell is where i'm saying product result so you click on there now i'm not going to do that because i've already done it okay so that's that one so every time i click on here tells me which number item I've picked. And then this, I've put a little formula, which is an index match that finds, goes across here and finds how it returns whatever is in this row here. Now this row is just a count of the number of items in the list. Well, the reason we want that is because I don't want, I mean, I could say I'm gonna have a drop down list with 20 items and cover myself, for example. But what I actually want is this sort of professional looking thing. So when I click furniture on here, I just get a drop down list with four items. But when I click office supplies, I get a drop down list with the nine items that are in office supplies. So it's a nice touch. It's the kind of thing that I like to do. I don't like to leave things to chance. You know, for all I know, you might want to put an extra item on some of these lists. We know what item we've picked and we know how many items are in the list. This incident is just a count A, count A, because it needs to count text items, not blanks. So we've got that one working. Now, this is where the real magic starts. How do we get this one dependent on what we've picked above? So if I go to format control, you'll see what I've done here the input is a named range and you can see that name range is being highlighted for me there now that is an actually a dynamic named range which means that the name range itself is a formula that's pointing to something based on effectively the results of the previous drop down list and then the link cell is quite simply just the one underneath so i will okay that and now i will show you how I created the dynamic named range. So dynamic name range. 
got the formula tab i'm just going to pin this actually for the moment so named manager right so the one i'm using is this subcategory list now this is the formula here now you can see it's automatically highlighted this but what it's done is it's saying that we're going to use this offset formula which can give us a range based off of some criteria from a starting point so starting point of this range i put as d5 which is this effectively the top left corner sort of offset by one so i've said right how many rows do i need to move down to get to my starting position one because i've started at d5 obviously it'd be zero if i started at d6 then i want to how many columns do i want to move across well i'm basing that on the previous drop downs result so two columns so that's going to give me the office supplies then i want to know how many rows long is my list now i'm basing that on the item count which i've picked up here now i could have used a, another formula to work out that item count another sort of offset but i thought it's just getting too complicated which is why i put it over there and then how many columns were one column all right In order to drive out these numbers, we're doing a link back to the data table and we're using some ifs. So obviously this is based on customer segment, but I only want the customer segment where we're matching the product subcategory. So that's why I'm using some ifs rather than just a straight some if. Don't really know much about this because the key inputs are the customer segment and the product choice and then it will just sum the sales and then on here we've got same two inputs but this time we're summing profit okay and then this chart quite simply is linked back to the um picks picks one of the standard format designs i've added some data labels and removed the axes if you want to know more about charts I've got plenty of videos on tidying up charts. Strongly suggest seven tips to improving chart appearance, which will give you something like this. There's one nice touch where I've linked the title to, ah, completely the wrong place. What I should have done is link that title to there, product choice. That way then, when I choose a different item, title changes. Slight subtlety is picking up the product choice here. I've used a slightly different formula. Well, I've used an offset formula again, actually. Because these drop down boxes, they output a number, but then you have to find out what that number relates to in the list. But because it's a dynamic list, I can't just say, oh, you know, like I did before, a kind of index match and pick find the number. This time I need to do an offset. And here, what I've done is just used the two results to say, I want to take that offset, in fact, almost what I did in the name range, really. I want to go one, pick the right list. So move to the right by whatever the list number is, and then offset down by whatever the result within that list is. So I'm going to say, right, move one across and four down office furnishings and give me office furnishings, okay? And that, in a nutshell, is how you can link two drop downs together, no VBA. And if you're familiar with all those techniques, hopefully that's given you enough. If you want more detail, like I say, I've got another video where I'm going through much more detail, exactly how I did all of these different things, go through the formulas in much more detail. So watch that video if you think you need a bit more help in getting this done. If the video is not out, hit the subscribe button and that bell icon and you'll get a little notification in the right hand corner of YouTube when that video comes out and you'll be able to go straight to it and get the learning that you need there. All right, I'll see you soon.